Good evening, everybody. I'll bring this regular meeting of Council to Order for March the 19th, 2024. Result of the agenda for the March the 19th, 2024 regular meeting of Council be adopted. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Dr. Memorio. I'd like one item uh, to be added to the agenda. Uh, under new business uh, for the approval and signing of an MDSA agreement with Sapatoya Cree Nation. So we can have an amended? Mm -hmm. okay. um, how do we do that? I can't remember. You pass this resolution and I <coughs> change the res resolution for the agenda to resolve that the amended agenda for the mar March 19th. So we pass this, uh, the, the original one, and then we do an amended thing? Uh, or you gotta write it amended. No, the the mover and the seconder agree to have the word amended added to the resolution. Oh, okay, gotcha. So do the mover and the seconder agree to the amended to amend the agenda? Yes. Yeah, you guys are saying the word resolution. It's confusing. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's like amended agenda. Yes, I'm yes. sorry. Yes. yes, the agenda. Yes. You agree? Okay. Any further discussion then? All in favor? So we are following the amended agenda. <clears throat> You'll add that in there somewhere? Yep. Okay. Result of the minutes of the March the 5th, 2024 regular council meeting and the March 11th, 2024 special meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Any discussion? All in favor? It's carried. All right, uh, going down to the six uh, correspondence from, uh, we have from Ing Orf. Inga, sorry. Any comments on that? Uh, just, it's a letter addressed to council, so I, I did put it on just to let council know that the bylaw officer does patrol the, the park on a regular basis, so it's not being neglected, but uh, okay. for your information. Did you have something? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I read the letter. It was a little bit confusing at first, but then when he included his uh, letter to the editor, he clarified which park or geographic area he was talking about, she, and, uh, she. or she. Um, and uh, I, I agree with uh, the concern that this individual has that uh, Legion Park is an on-leash um, park for pets and uh, people need to uh, respect that rule and uh, the administration sounds like that uh, will respond and then have uh, hopefully maybe some increased patrols or look out in that area to uh, notify pet owners that the uh, pets in there need to be on on a leash and maybe a reminder in our town page and Facebook to uh, uh, reiterate that it, it's an on leash uh, park and to respect the other users of the park. Okay. Uh, Councilor Matt, uh, Well, just to continue on uh, Deputy Mayor Morio's thought line there, some public communication uh, in the paper and or social media, but if we can also include cat owners as well, because they also are not to be off leash or at large, and if we can maybe reference our bylaw to both of those, because with the weather warming up, they're potentially going to be of increased concern as well. And that uh, we need to be making sure that we are following up on these types of concerns and making sure enforcement is there and when we are passing amendments to bylaws that we are doing so and we're also factoring in that enforcement piece. And if we don't have the enforcement piece, then we probably shouldn't be um, passing the bylaw. Okay. Anything further? All right. Uh, 77.1, seven resolve the Director of Public Works report be received, moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, Mr. Harvey, um, in regards to your um, 
type of plan regarding local improvements. When can the property owners along affected projects receive their letter for local improvement? I got the uh, feedback from the transportation committee, so those should be going out this week. Okay, so hopefully sooner than later, so that they have sufficient time to make the decision. Thank you. That's all. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.2. Result of the February 2024 Swan River Handy <coughs> Transit Band report be received. Moved by Councilor Bob Permoichuk, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Discussion? <coughs> Councilor Medwood. I have a couple of questions, more just for clarification. So in January, February, under customer type, it's a, basically has a total of 72 and 77, but then further down where it says trips canceled, it has 15 and 8. So is that 72 and 77, the total number of requests coming in, and therefore the final number of paid actual complete services or trips were 57 and 69, like you would have to subtract those two numbers? Sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the, like, I'm unable to look at the whole sheet in one, so you, you'll have to explain that again, sorry. So under customer type, yeah. it has a total in January of 72 customers, and in February it says 77, so oh, we'll, yeah. Just, yeah, we'll okay. just look at the January one, or I guess this month's February. And then at the bot bottom section it has trips cancelled. And the total number of trips canceled in February was eight. So would that be 69 total paid completed service trips, or would it still be 77? I'm. I'll have to double check, but I'm assuming the they're actual. So canceled would be on top of the customer types. But I'll, I'll so have to get that. and break and basically bring that total successful ones of 69. That's what the math is when you subtract it. I took the calculator out. You had another question? Uh, yes. Uh, for the medical ones, do we know how many of those were outside of the valley? Uh, no, I can't answer that right now. I'll have to get back to you. Medical trips. What do you, what do you mean outside the valley? Like actually physically leaving the valley area? Yeah. Yeah, so the appointment itself, so not the pickup of the person, but the appointment itself was like maybe Dauphin or somewhere like that, as right. opposed to being just right here in town. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll consult with the drivers and uh, get back to you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Further this, oh, uh, sorry, Councilor White. <clears throat> just a comment that I, <clears throat> I was adding some tracking. I was seeing uh, concepts there that, in fact, 98% of those are for medical or uh, hospital or ambulatory so it, it certainly is a need that our, our community has and uh, i should appreciate the fact we can offer that and please thank the team that looks after that for us Stuart. thank you okay further discussion all in favor it's carried uh council and cao reports uh councillor edward um. Well, there's the Cal meeting last week that was, I think, predominantly budget discussions again. I attended the Swan Valley Communities That Care meeting. We're looking at potentially some restructuring on that particular group. And this weekend, I was in Portage for the Manitoba COPP board meeting. Uh, we have passed our third reading of pending approved amendments, though. For the CCTV policy and liability agreements, which once those amendments have been, or changes have been made, they'll be shared with the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we are also looking at doing some strategic planning. We formed a committee because we are approximately, I think, three years from our separation of being overseen by Man our MPI and the move to Manitoba Justice, so we're looking at kind of doing a five-year plan of uh, planning for the program and for um, funding. And uh, we have actually a few groups starting up, mostly down in the southern part of Manitoba, and we have a couple interested in the northern part of Manitoba, so 
we're hoping to see a few more come on board. And then I was just at the service to seniors meeting this afternoon, and it was mostly uh, budget planning. It's that time of year. And yeah, I think that covers it for me. Thank you. Councilor Bobbin. Thank you, Your Worship. March 6th, I attended an egg society meeting. I thought it was a very productive meeting. I also had a transportation meeting March 11th, an HR meeting March 11th, airport commission event on March 13th. We passed a budget, it's actually another very productive meeting. I have a watershed meeting uh, March 25th coming up. Uh, just to speak a little bit about the airport, I did with uh, Deputy Mayor Morio, concerned I've been talking with. Director Harvey on the asphalt building there, so that's kind of ongoing. Um, that's pretty much it. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Boychuk. Uh, March 6th, I was also at the uh, meeting with the Ag Society, reviewed the agreement, and uh, got that all uh, finalized. March 11th, uh, attended the special meeting. March 12th, Cal meeting, and met with the short term rentals delegation who had some good suggestions and input regarding the proposed accommodation tax. March 14th, had a fire board meeting with municipality Minitonis Bozeman. Also, some more good discussion there and understanding of thoughts regarding past events and future possibilities. Uh, I'd like to send out congratulations on another successful Billy Beal, and we're looking forward to the corporate challenge this weekend and the G8 presentation on Monday, March 25th. Oh, I think I should have left that for the, yeah. I'm just going to remind I'm going to stop because okay. yeah. there's another one there. Okay. That's it. You're good? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Councillor White. Uh, a bit busy. Uh, I appreciate those call meetings because, in fact, one of the topics, including what was also mentioned, was we talked about the GIS. And everywhere I go, I just hear support, support, support for it. So I'm pretty excited that that appears to be moving along nicely. We also talked about the accommodation tax, which uh, I appreciate that we're reaching out and involving all peoples and all groups who are involved in that world. At the Urban Forest meeting following that, uh, we had, the team decided to do a, a recognition of uh, Ed Richenhaler, who has since passed and one of the founders of the Urban Forest, so we'll be planting a tree in the, uh, the community forest over by uh, Keltire. We're pretty excited about that. I've been talking to his family and they're excited about it also. And Arbor Day is coming up. That's when we we'll plant that tree. I think it's April 21, but don't quote me on that one. And I want to thank Councillor Bobbick for his staff from the Swan Lake Watershed District. It's been an impeccable reaching out and offering us trees and a way to put trees. So please thank uh, your main man there because he's doing a good job. As is Councillor, as, uh, Mr. Uh, Harvey has been a big help too. So you guys are doing a lot of work to try to make that happen. We hope to involve the schools, we hope to involve the community. When I get that date tightened up, which we still have time, I will do so. The airport commission I attended with uh, Councillor Bobbick and uh, that road issue was certainly front and center. And the safety, I was a compliment to uh, Mr. Poole and his team. Our, we got a good safety ranking. Basically, all the important things we were covered doing really, really well. So, nitpicking relative to where they knew everything in page 72 of the manual, which I don't think is a big concern, but you guys did a good job. So, please thank your team for that, too. And we also, of course, talked about the budget. That's it. Thank you. Okay, Director Harvin. Uh, just a correction May 20th is Pardon? Harbor Day. I believe you said April 21st, but April 21st. it's May, May 20th. For That's Harbor close. Day. <laughs> <laughs> May 20th is May Arbor May 20th Day. is Arbor Day. Okay. And that's where we plant all those trees. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Powell. Hey, um, so attended a special meeting March 11th. Um, I also attended an interagency meeting, meeting, which was really well attended. Um, lots of good things happening there. Uh, March the 6th, we um, passed budget for the library. Um, we took some time, but we got, we had a budget and we were able to complete that. So. Yeah, sure. You can see that's on the agenda tonight. So, yeah, that's what I think. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Uh, nothing really mm -hmm. much to add to what wasn't said already, um, but uh, just have reached out again to uh, Swan Valley West to get some dates and move the uh, discussion along on uh, shared services with them. And hopefully, we can nail down a date and amongst everybody's busy schedules to get that discussion. Uh, back on track and 
hopefully get some of the grievance done. And that's all I got. Okay. Well, for myself, it's uh, good to be back from my holiday, I guess, and back to work again. And thanks for everybody that uh, kept everything you know moving along here. Um, uh, the other day on Monday, I guess I had a meeting with the Reeves, and we had uh, primarily our discussion about the GIS and moving forward with the GIS and basically um, then giving us kind of the nod to proceed with the application to uh, for the GIS. There's still a lot of other work that we need to do, but we can start that process. Uh, I had a good chat with uh, Chief Nelson Shai from Sapatoya Cree Nation. Of course, uh, they are ready uh, with the purchase of the uh, some land that they have purchased in the town of Swan River and we have a resolution a little later on on their municipal development and service agreement and um, they're almost ready to get building what they're going to build on that piece of land. So uh, their third uh, agreement with the town of Swan River so we're glad to be working with um, Sapatoyak and also with Mosquisipic as, as well with their uh, uh, ventures that they're working on right now. The next uh, Monday, just as a reminder, everybody that will be uh, attending at the school division through the GA, uh, Chief uh, Cadmus uh, DeLorme, uh, uh, that will be guest speaking uh, before us uh, and uh, having an evening of discussion on uh, Indigenous relations and, and so forth with municipalities and, and everyone else that will attend. So, looking forward to that. Moving on then, uh, Mr. Poole, anything there with your report? Uh, yeah, just an apology. I didn't get the, the Protective Services report up. I referred to it in my CAO's report, but uh, that will definitely be on the next council meeting. I can send it out by email. But uh, that's from our lead hand municipal services worker. Uh, and the, the old council will notice the GIS resolution is back on the agenda tonight. So in the previous agenda, I did have the rural municipality of Swan Valley West, not the municipality. So I, they were called on that. And instead of just editing what was passed, I put it on because it is a pretty important resolution. And as my report states, just working on the structure standards bylaws, uh, getting those edits done for the next readings, uh, providing council with a summary of the accommodation tax to date the objection. So a good discussion can be had moving forward and then expect a summary report on the grant <coughs> applications for 2024. Okay. Any questions on the report? Answer my group. You more or less answered the first question of the protective services report, but what's the new frequency or is it going to remain at once a month or because I think that's all we received a protective services in the past or will it become a bi-weekly report? Uh, for what's on there, I guess we'll, right now it's quarterly, like they're, we'll see though, it might be once a month and depending on what happens. With the structure standards, I'm positive there'll be a little more action, so monthly would probably be expected. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, just on uh, accommodation tax here, so this is still a, a resolution in progress, right? We're still going to be discussion factors. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Anything further? Go ahead. I'm just wondering about the grant by law. Instead of you spending a lot of time making up a report, just you just want to attach the applications and send them out to us? Or? Uh, there's quite a bit of them in there. Well, I guess I could. What, I, what we're doing is just creating a, a summary template, a really quick just a summary template of what it is, the decision process, showing you that I've spent my budget, now you have to decide. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, uh, Director Harvey. There is just a follow-up from the CFO uh, regarding our earlier question on the handy van. So the trips canceled are not included in the customer type and trip purpose numbers. Uh, so they would be separate, so you wouldn't have to subtract. And then January medical trips include a one-way trip to Grandview, a one-way trip to Dauphin, a return trip to and from Dauphin. February medical trips included two return trips to and from Dauphin. Thank you. Okay, thank you. 
All right, moving on, 8.1, 8 Result of the Northwest Regional Library 2024 budget be accepted as received. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Powell. <coughs> Discussion, <coughs> Councilor Edwards. I have two questions. Uh, does the, there is a slight increase from the previous year. So I'm just curious as to whether this budget includes a pay increase for the head librarian position, which has been difficult to fill. And also there's a line towards, on the last page towards the bottom that says union negotiations, but it doesn't, it indicates a number in 2023, but not in 2024. So does this budget include one, an increase for a wage for a head librarian? And two, does it include union negotiations he didn't certify. Okay. But it does include a wage increase for a head library. Yes, it definitely does. Yes. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, I was just looking at it as well and just wondering how the proportions are calculated. I noticed uh, Municipality Swan Valley West was down $130.12. Well, the, tw the town of Swan River is up $4,396 was one of them so I was just like how is that based if, um, yeah it's per capita okay so that much of a yeah. change in the there is a little bit of a change I know from when we when we were doing this but um a lot like um of course but I think that's basically how we figured it per capita but the town's per capita rate is consistent to okay. the last years. It's like uh, maybe seven or ten people changed in the last census, but Swan Valley West's per capita rate from the previous years in the census have gone down that much. Quite a bit. Okay. Um, then I had another one the furniture and equipment for 16750 <coughs> For much more an excitement. It is second page, about halfway down. I think it's second page. Yeah, second page, halfway down. Sixteen seven fifty for this year. And I believe that was because that had to do with our. I know there's an insurance claim, but I believe that we have. Um, it was also to do with. We figured that out. Um, we were talking about the shelving in there, I believe, as well. There was some new shelving that had to be put in there, but I think that's where that all was based on. So, is that paid by insurance or that's coming out of the budget? Some of it was paid by insurance, but most of it, um, I know that there was a talk. We had to make, um, we had to do some retro in that in the door um, have to be built um, for security into the right into the library area okay. there, like into the back part there. Um, I know they've had uh, basically a, it's, it's kind of like a swinging gate to get in there and it had to be a locked gate in order oh. to secure because of the fact that we are not locking the doors anymore oh. on the building. So there has to be something so that was where so oh, that was. And then last, I was just wondering late fees. Are you guys charging late fees, collecting late they fees? Are now. Perfect. Good to hear. Late fees. Yes, they Excellent. are. They are on there. Um, there was, you know, and with the budget, there we initially we had talked about an increase on, but we were able to just stay with what we were, what we had from the previous year, and not have to make any increase. Um, so that was a big thing because we we had talked about doing an increase in, in the budget, but we were able to, with some, of course, some, I guess some donations as well, and so on and so forth, and we were able to just kind of stay where we're at. There's still things to do, but um, we're coming. That's good. Okay, further discussion? Just for information, the uh, insurance reimbursement is listed under revenue at 65. I think that'll close off that claim then too, right? Okay. One quick question. Okay, so that was the furniture stuff. Was that that doesn't include the wages? Because we also included um, insurance for the wages. I don't think that's okay. that. That's only if that claim is accepted. Yes. 
So we're in the process of, of seeing if that will come through. Yeah. 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 All right, uh, Councilor Medley. Thank you for all your hard work, Councilor Yeah. No. It's been good. Okay, we're getting there. You didn't need that, was it? Maybe you just want to thank? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to thank all you right. for all your hard work on this. I thought budget. you had a question. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, then, uh, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.3, whereas crimes or a crime of all types and levels of severity have uh, 8.2. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I did miss it. Resolved that the 2024 Northwest Regional Library levy in the amount of 102538 and 30 cents be approved for payment once the audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2023 have been received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, now we can do 8.3. Whereas crime of all types and levels of severity have risen in the Swan Valley to a point where it's affecting our citizens' ability to live, work, and play. And whereas the federal government is charged with creating criminal laws that apply across the country, the federal government is also responsible for administrating the Royal Canadian Mounted Police to enforce Canadian law, prevent crime, and maintain peace, order, and security. And whereas the local Swan River RCMP detachment is short on resources needed to effectively enforce Canadian law, prevent crime, and maintain peace, order, and security, and whereas the council of the Swan Valley, so the councils of the Swan River Valley believe it, it's incumbent amongst themselves to assist in providing further resources to enforce Canadian law, prevent crime, and to maintain peace, order, and security within the respective municipalities. And whereas the councils of the Swan Valley agree in principle to share the cost of these further resources, therefore be resolved the town of Swan River support an annual monetary contribution in accordance to the signed contribution agreement required to start up the Swan Valley GIS unit in collaboration with the Rural Municipality of Mountain, the Rural Municipality of Minnetonas Bozeman, and the Municipality of Swan Valley West. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? Councillor Father. Just to speak to the resolution, with the resolution, more or less state that the RCMP are responsible for the safety of all the residents in LB. But at the same time, here we are paying for it. So, not that I'm against the resolution, but I just want to make the statement that I don't think that the taxpayers in the town of Swan River should be paying twice for everything that they get. Just make sure that we carry on with that and ask that question. I'm sure that you will. So, thank you. Councilor Medwood. As per last week, my feelings haven't changed any. I still believe that we should be consulting with our public to make sure they're okay with the, now that we have an actual number or rate of increase to their property taxes, we should be conferring with them to make sure they're okay with that amount. So I'm still not comfortable moving forward without public approval. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Abstain? You're opposed? Abstain. Abstain. Okay, it's carried. 8.4. Results of Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission 2024 budget be accepted as received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor. Bobic, discussion? <coughs> Councilor Medwood. Uh, yeah, there's a line that says transfer from accumulated surplus $75,000. It's on the first page under other revenue. That is, <coughs> that is to pay for the capital job of adding a card lock system to you. What surplus is it coming from? Oh, there is an accumulated surplus that the airport commission owns. That's okay. So it's from the airport commissioners. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.5. Result that the 2024 Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission levy in the amount of $30,770 be approved for payment once the audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2023 have been received. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion? Councilor Medwood. I have a question. Our resolution implies that it will be paid upon receipt of the 2023 financial audit. However, the invoice itself at the very bottom says due upon receipt with a 1.25% service charge uh, per month on overdue balances. So which one is it? Is it due right now? Because that, that invoice is dated March 14th or, and will we incur penalty if we delay payment or how does that work? Airport Commission? Yeah. If you look at the bottom of the invoice, it was dated March 14th, and at the bottom it says due upon receipt, but our re resolution says we're not releasing the money until uh, uh, without, the audit is Without done. speaking for them, but I'm just thinking that this is probably one of their own invoices in the, which they invoice to all uh, parties if it's whatever services that they provide, and they're using this as that template, and it doesn't really necessarily apply. Am I correct on that? I would argue to the commission that the town should not be charged interest based on, on us requiring them to provide their financial statements in order for us to release the money. So it's an action that they have to go through that's holding up our payment. So okay, if they so wanted to charge us interest, resolution comes them. through in time. We're good. Okay, I was just concerned about the potential. Uh, <coughs> Overdue. We, we have our representation on, on the airport commission, so go ahead. Well, just a comment. I want to thank uh, uh, CFO Ganita. Not only is he doing our, our community's taxes and our accounts and budgets, he does all this also. And uh, it, it's pretty complex, and uh, we just appreciate the work he does keeping the airport commission uh, fiscally responsible. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.6. Result of the town of Swan River purchase a Audra or Odra? Odra. Odra MT4H sweeper from Challenger for $308,662 plus applicable taxes. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, second by Councillor Boisha. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. I have one question. Bottom of the, or towards the bottom of the uh, decision paper, it says that it's approved in the financial plan. Is that referring to 23 or 24's financial plan? And on that, if it's 2024, is it already factored into what has been presented to Council, or is that yet to come? Uh, so it is included on the 2024 financial plan. Uh, so technically, that financial plan isn't approved yet, but it is on there, and it's out of the machinery reserve, uh, so it can be purchased at any time because it's coming out of the machinery okay. reserve. Thank you. Uh, but it was budgeted for three hundred seventy-five thousand for twenty twenty-four. Councilor Powell, uh, just wondering, do we have quotes on other ones as well? Uh, yeah, we got a quote from a Pelican. And uh, it was three hundred ninety-one thousand, and then uh, Cubex also submitted one, but theirs wasn't self-propelled, uh, so we didn't uh, look at the quotation for that one because that would tie up the loader for six weeks. Deputy okay. Mayor Morial, uh, yeah, is this the same um, make and model that the Public Works um, trialed and tested last year? Um, uh, it's similar. The hopper is the same. The truck is different. That one was uh, uh, a Ford, and this is a, a Suzu truck. Uh, but the hopper is the same, and they did make some upgrades that addressed some of the issues we had in the past. Like they made a removable spray bar. Uh, they right. So they factored in all the suggestions and concerns that Public Works had with that unit last year. Yeah. Factored into this new one that's being. Yeah, yeah, and I met with uh, the foreman and the mechanic. Uh, we went through this 
specifications and they said those issues had been addressed with the new one. Okay, and then so with that now from changing from a Ford chassis to an Isuzu, um, I'm not aware of an Isuzu dealer around here. Um, yeah, it would be similar to the current one we have. It's also an Isuzu. Okay. Uh, so there's certain stuff we can get in town, done in town, and uh, like just with general mechanics kind of thing that can work on the trucks. If there's something specific to it, then uh, that has to be done at a dealership. Then yeah, I would have to go out of town for that. Okay. We asked for the Ford, but it's not available. They're still working on a deal with Ford. Uh, just the uh, shipping, if it has to go, is it covered under the warranty, or do we have to pay for the expense of having it taken to another community to have it serviced? Uh, if there's something with warranty, uh, then we have where they'll send it up, they'll send mechanics to us. Council Bob. Uh, just to let you know that this unit here is available in 60 days, and the other ones are close to 300. For the discussion, Councillor Powell. So, so when would we be purchasing, purchasing this? Uh, if this is approved by council, then I'd be contacting them tomorrow to start that 60-day clock because it's coming out of the machine reserve, so we don't have to wait for the budget to be passed. Could we not um, hold off until closer to after the summer kind of thing, or is it something we have to do right now? We'd like to get it uh, as soon as we can to help out with the spring sweeping, okay. just because we had issues last year. And the last one was uh, 2010, uh, so it had 13 seasons, and it was starting to show its age the last uh, season. Yeah, the sweeper from last year was spent a little bit of time away from town. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, the faster we get done the sweeping, the faster you get your crosswalks painted and curve paint. So the faster it gets here better, but at the same time we will have for a period of time two sweepers, so we're hoping that will be out for pick up the pace a bit because there has been a lot of sand used this year because of all the icy conditions, so the streets will take some serious cleanup. So that's one of the thoughts I think uh, in conversation with Mr. Harvey and the foreman. Uh, whether we keep the second one or sell it, the offer that they give us was really not that great, so the decision was kind of made that we'll keep it and try to sell it privately, or if it works out with the budget, we'll keep it and keep going. Uh, Councillor White. I always defer to the mechanical things and others, Councillor Bobby. At 300 days versus 60, it sounds like a big deal to me, but you're not worried about that? What do you mean by that? Well, did one have 300 days and one had only 60, the one we're buying only had 60 days? No, no. One would be delivered in 60 days ah. and one would be delivered in 300 days. And I have my new hearing aids. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Though. Yeah, I was just going to clarify that. And yeah, also with Council Bob, you can definitely see, like when you go in the residential, there's a lot of sand on the uh, snow that's on the boulder, so there'll definitely be a lot of sweeping to do this spring due to the icy start to the winter. For the discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.7. Whereas Tapatoyak Cree Nation has partnered with the Town of Swan River in two previously signed municipal development and service agreements, the Town of Swan River is proud of these mutually beneficial agreements and look forward to our continued success in our relationship with Sapatoya Cree Nation. And whereas Sapatoya Cree Nation, under the terms of the Treaty Land Entitlement Framework Agreement, has acquired Plan 72255 located within the town of Swan River. And whereas the nation and the town, pursuant to the Municipal Act, have drafted a third municipal development and service agreement in regard to the noted property. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and the CAO be authorized to sign the attached municipal development and service agreement on behalf of the town of Swan River. Moved by Councillor Midwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Midwood. Yeah, I'm just wondering if maybe CAO Poole can give me a rundown on the 26 page document that there was no time to read, just so. Uh... 
I know what's going on. This is the same as the other two that we have too. But, but the, I you never around. looked at them. I, well, I have. I wasn't okay. around when they came to the table, so no, I can't say that I've seen them. I'm just getting. I sent it to email by email earlier today, but I will get it up here. Resolution was just that. So. In basic terms. So if you update, you'll be able to see the attachment. So in summary, uh, the agreement entails that Sapatoya pays a service fee for all services, all municipal services provided by the town. So they would get any water, sewer, garbage collection, and they would pay for that uh, in a similar fashion that their neighbor would. So they, they are required to get a third party assessor at their cost. And uh, we, we, that's how we calculate the service fee that they would require or sorry, they would receive every municipal service that their neighbor gets. There's really no difference. But without going through the 26-page document, that is the essence of the agreement. Right? There is a dispute clause, an exit clause, uh, access allowances. Uh, so is this then that land remains known as the town of Swan River land, or that becomes treaty, treaty, treaty. That's land? Right. Okay. But they pay for services from the town of Swan River. That's correct. Councilor Powell and then Councilor Bob. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, but at the same time, they meet all our zoning bylaws and all yes. our development bylaws. And everything. It's just instead of the word taxes, it's a service agreement. Correct. The, the development processes are identical for them as they are for their needs. Okay. You ready? Yeah. I, I guess I can't. I couldn't really tell where this piece of land was. Next to the west one. It's just south of the west one. Just south of the west one. Okay. So they're working on their TLC right now. Uh, no, they they purchased the property and. Uh, and they've gone through Dauphin Land Titles processes, so they own it. It's theirs. This is pretty much the last step. That's correct. Yeah. So they were they've been waiting for that process. It's notorious for taking yeah. time, but uh, now that it's complete, they've notified us and are ready to sign the service. Okay. Further discussion. All in favor? It's carried. So I did speak with the chief on this this afternoon, and. Uh, uh, he did say that we will set a date for the signing process as, 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 as well. So that is sometime in the, in the near future. Okay, moving on. 10, 10.1. Resolve the accounts as follows. Be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 31342 to number 31400. Totaling four hundred and fifty-five thousand four hundred and eighty-three and ninety-one cents is listed on Schedule A. Checks number three one three six zero was voided and replaced check uh, replaced by check number three one three six eight. Payroll accounts checks number five four two six to number five four two nine totaling one hundred and six thousand one hundred and forty-eight and forty-six cents as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposit payments totaling $27,650.34 as listed on Schedule C. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor uh, Boychuk. Discussion? Councillor Medwood? I have four. Uh, 31354, Vopney, uh, $3,308.35 for incentive program year two payment. What incentive program? I can't they built the house. Exact, pardon me? They built the house. Yeah, it would have been a new development. And when you apply for the uh, incentive program, you get reimbursed a portion of your taxes. Oh, wonderful. Good to know. Um, the next one is under 31377, uh, co-op charges. There's 
One for fuel card lock and one for petroleum, regular gasoline and dyed diesel. What's the difference between the two? Uh, so dyed diesel is the equipment that isn't licensed, like the graders and loaders and that, because it's not going on the highways. And then regular diesel goes in like the uh, dump trucks, because they do go on the highways. So we have actual tanks of petroleum comes and fills up like on a farm? Uh, yeah, is we have two works? tanks at the public works. Okay, we thank you, because that's how I distinguish car lock and petroleum in my life, is yep. farm tank and my car tank, so thank you. Um, <laughs> 31395 SPI Health and Safety Inc. 3627.88 Safety Extraction Equipment Mount and Cable. What is that for? Uh, that's for fall arrest equipment. Okay. Uh, so that's for lift stations when the guys go down uh, to check in confined spaces. Okay. And then the last one is 31398. Uh, 2,260.61 for storm sewer grates. The S on the end implies plural, so how many did we get for that amount? Uh, I'll have to check the, I don't have the number right off the top of my head, but we'll get that number for you. Thank you. Councilor uh, With those grates, is that not steel that they're cutting out from water, steel and mechanical? I don't, are they, but there was, there was some that we were doing that because they were such an old model and yeah. they were uh, a cast iron so then they were breaking and then falling in. That's those uh, rounded ones that we still have but the newer ones we can just buy the grates because they don't break and fall in. It's the uh, those old rounded ones that uh, even if you got new ones, there's just like a design flaw that the grader would hit them and then they fall in and then you have this open hole. But the newer one, you can just buy the, the grate. Yeah, but I guess what I'm getting at is one where steel and mechanical doesn't sell for a sort of grate. They just sell steel. Yeah. So that would be the steel that the guys are using to make the grate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. Yeah. Okay, for the discussion. Councilor Bullock-Shep. Yeah, I just had a few, few quick ones. 31348, the strategic plan books. I was just wondering, were there any left over? And can we distribute those maybe to the surrounding municipalities if there was any left over? There is left over uh, pages, yeah, we can. If we want to send that so many. I don't know. Office. Okay, that was just one idea I had when that, that had come. 31355, RBC over limit fee of $29. Just wondering if this happens often, if we should maybe look at increasing it by maybe $500 or something in order to negate that fee. And then 31386, the POS machine for the pool and the arena. Uh, just wondering if that obviously is the debit machine there. Uh, is this like a one-time fee or is this something that comes up Go ahead. Yeah, this is a one-time fee. It's new debit machine. Things we leased them before. Uh, they needed to be upgraded. They didn't have tap. They didn't work half the time. They had issues connecting to the internet. So we upgraded and we purchased these ones. We've sent our leases back. So one time purchase. Oh. I was I was gonna say it, it, it's too bad. We should have looked into Square and got that. And it's these ones were recommended with our ActiveNet software system. Okay. It's at the pool and the rink. Okay. Good. That's all I got. <clears throat> Councilor Baldick. Uh, 313888 75 7350 of traffic gravel. How many cubic yards is that? I believe that was 400. Okay. okay. Yes, 400. Yeah, it yes. says 400. <clears throat> Further dis discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.2, whereas the town of Swan River used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property under the Municipal Act Clause 252E and set the fees and charges for the works under Clause 252-1A of the Act, and whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on the attached Schedule A totaling $2,975.34 
Therefore, it may be resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed on Schedule A be added to the corresponding property tax roll and collected in that same manner under subsections 252.2 of the Act. Be it further resolved that notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes, effective April the 1st, 2024. Moved by Councilor Bart Moichuk, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We're going to go down to members privilege. Councillor Butch. Okay, and then. Uh, Since you didn't get the chance to finish. Well, I, I just had one more. Uh, congratulations to the community for being selected to host the 2024 uh, U13 Female Regional Prospect Showcase, March 29th to 31st nice. this year. Yeah, pretty cool. And um, I guess a, a shout out to anyone that's listening and has a business and would like to get involved. We are looking for some members for the Chamber of Commerce uh, and would like to get some new people out there and some new ideas. And that's everything for me. Okay. Um, Councilor Bob. Thank you, Your Worship. Just uh, I'd like to take a mention. <coughs> There was a gentleman passed away here by the name of Mr. Gordon Collin that worked for years for the town of Swan River. He was a rep there, just uh, condolences to the family. Uh, went to help a little bit with Billy Beals up there in the morning. It's surprisingly how much work there is to set that up until you see what starts in the morning. And they had lots of help, so kudos to them. They run. It was a mini blizzard that day, I called it, but I got to be able to escape early because they had so much help. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of work. Goes to them. Um, just for food for thought, at the airport commission, you'll hear the plane coming in and some medical stuff, and there's up to 90 flights a month coming in here, so that's something to be made aware of that you know the town of Fort River staff keeps that clean. There's a lot of flights coming in and out of here, so again, kudos to them. So, uh, just with, uh, I'd like to speak a little bit about the GIS. I just uh, this is moving forward, and uh, not until all municipalities are on board. But I just, just for uh, council's information, I, I do believe that GIS is important. But I also believe GIS should be put on a service levy, not a municipal tax, as then all buildings in the town of Swan River will pay for this, as in schools, government buildings, and stuff like that. So just something for food for thought. Um, also, just like to mention that uh, Director Harvey will mention when uh, the magnesium chloride is being applied this year, just to keep in mind that 1.4 will work on anything that you've done with 1.8 liters. Something will probably save yourself 20 to 25 percent. That's it. Good, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, just two items I'd like to bring. Um, with the warm weather and lots of people uh, walking outside, um, just be cognizant that uh, it's nice to be out walking with your pets and stuff like that, but uh, if you have a dog or any other pet you're walking and it has a crap or a poop, uh, we do have a bylaw that states that you need to uh, pick it up and dispose of it, not just ignore it and leave it away, which makes it disgusting and unpleasant for the people trying to utilize our pathways or roadways. Uh, especially with the snow receding, um, we see a lot of extra prizes, I guess, that's being revealed by the snow uh, due to irresponsible people not picking up. So uh, just a, a friendly request that if you have a dog or, or a pet and you're walking and it has a crap, you're supposed to pick it up. Uh, so, um, okay. <laughs> um, I've had a couple people mention that to me, especially now that snow as we're going and it's like as the roadways are getting wider with the snow receding uh, there's some unexpected prizes that are unintentionally being stepped in as they're walking so um, and then on a lighter note if you haven't noticed uh, uh, some of the posts on Facebook hopefully this uh, week um, as far as I'm uh, informed that the actual physical CT scanner is supposed to arrive at the health facility uh, this week if not probably early next week so 
that'll be a huge milestone uh, for the community that which will hopefully reduce those 90 flights mm -hmm. that are coming in there not that uh, seeing the flights come into the airport makes the airport very important uh, but uh, rather have the scanner in the community um, versus uh, having the people actually be um, flown out to various locations to get those scanned so um, I'm sure once that actually physically arrives on the dock at the health facility uh, there's supposed to be some notifications going on so that uh, we can celebrate that milestone after a decades long uh, fight with all levels of government and health authorities uh, to make that happen so stay tuned and hopefully we'll uh, get that and do a photo op with the Star and Times to come there and all the other uh, reporter agencies. So. Are you suggesting that we have a bottle of champagne to smash? Whatever. whatever. <laughs> That's been 10 years. <laughs> Longer. Longer than 10 years. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Medwood. Uh, well, as a member of the Bozeman Lions, I was helping out, but I wasn't able to be there that day, but I was selling tickets at Cook and Cook literally until I had to leave town for my COPP board meeting. So uh, uh, results so far, I won't make the meeting Thursday night either, but uh, sounds like we did very good. Lots of ticket sales. We actually sold out of the 50-50 on, well, there was no 50-50 tickets for me to sell on Friday when I was sitting there. So we sold out before Friday. They did offer, I think, uh, another 50-50 up at the lake. So we kind of had two going there and that one did almost as well as the first one. So, uh, yeah, we had some good results, some um, good money to go into the Swan Medical Assistance Fund that's supported by all three lines in the valley. And uh, actually, uh, Councillor Powell reminded me that I need to follow up on, and I just found the document right now, uh, on that temporary paint so we can maybe look at supporting uh, the Friendship Centre in a active reconciliation and maybe offer some temporary paint for their missing women's walk and their every child matters walk so we can kind of identify the area of the walk and maybe offer some support there so I'm on that I'm following up <laughs> okay. uh, uh, CO Poole and I have talked about this but there's a couple of releases in today's paper yesterday's and we've also the taxpayers got them in our homes relative to the garbage and recycling. And it's all the numbers are accurate and very precise, but I've had two phone calls from individuals saying, why do I have to pay $475 more? That's not true at all. In fact, I believe it's 4% more, and that happens for two years total, and it's going to be roughly $10 or $15 more. So if we put those terms in lay person's terms, is that a neutral word, lay person? In our sending out those bills, whatever they call then it then we don't get these phone calls, and I'm sure other councillors have been the message, how come you're raising it to four so it doesn't say that. But I would think of paragraphs saying, here's what it is, here's why it is, it comes every two years, it's a 4% increase, it's going to cost the average what single family dwelling $10, $40. It was, it was not a lot. So uh, a suggestion to our financial team. I, uh, April 4th or 3rd, uh, Councillor Deputy Mayor Morio and I, and perhaps who knows others, will be going to Dauphin. We've arranged a meeting with a dozen to 14 first and second year resident medical doctors there, and we'll go for lunch and pizza with them. We'll have a couple hours, and we'll take packages of promotional packages for our community to get out and encourage those guys to come here. In part of that discussion, I was talking to a cardiologist, and it wasn't very successful getting a cardiologist to move here when we talked about it. But in discussion, he says, you have a wonderful young doctor in Swan River, Dr. Burnside. He says, you guys got a good one. So I, uh, coming from the top cardiologists in the city, saying, hey, look after that guy. So uh, I've certainly sent the message to Dr. Burnside, and uh, it's nice to hear that from other members of his profession from elsewhere. So thank you. Uh, Councilor White, um, on the, the topic of the uh, special service levies, it's an opportunity for you to uh, talk and discuss the, the whole thing with your rate payers once in a while. I've had to. <laughs> That's why I had to see you. Tell us about Yeah, just a few things. Um, just a huge congratulations to both the Aspen and the Swan Valley St. Peter's. Um, 
I don't know, you know, if you haven't been to an AFSCME game, or, you know, I know the Stampeders this year wasn't wasn't the way we wanted to go, but um, if you've ever been to an AFSCME game, it's, it's amazing what bring what the people they bring in involved here. Like, it is huge. And they bring people from all over this valley, so it is a huge, huge thing. Um, so just a huge congratulations to them. Um, another huge thing we have going on, we have on Thursday, uh, we have a free pancake breakfast, which is uh, March 21st is the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. So we have a huge pancake breakfast going on that day. So it'd be great if, for anybody and everybody who can attend. It's from 11 to 2. If you like pancakes and sausages, that's, that's the day. Um, another, uh, another just a huge, um, I was in Saskatoon this past weekend, and just a huge, uh, look to realize how well our roads are looked after here. We. Um, I was in Saskatoon this past week weekend, and the difference between Swan River and Saskatoon, and in good new developments, is amazing. Um, when they plow there, if your car is on the street, that's it stays there, and they just plow, and it doesn't matter. There's there is no no rhyme or reason. It's just down one down the middle, and it's your car. So we have to make a, a huge thank you to for all the work that goes into our roads because they are. They are top compared to um, some some of these bigger cities too. Um, and the other other thing is my thing is a, a huge uh, good luck to Cash Hinkleman who is playing in New York this uh, next few days. He'll be playing um, in uh, it's not provincials but it's uh, playoffs for uh, for the Ontario Junior Ring and uh, they're in a playoff spot so that's where they're off to uh, New York to play. Nice. Yeah. Good luck to them. I don't really have much more. I, I think that the uh, definitely the thank you of, of Mr. Collin and his work that he did. I, I remember a lot of stuff. He, that guy volunteered for everything. I remember him from just a really young age. And he, the pancake breakfast, I remember him being involved with so much over the years. And, and then the arena. And I remember when uh, when we built this uh, new town office and him sitting here with Mr. Halliday and, and chatting and, and talking about a lot of the history I and mean, these things should be all written down because we lose those pieces and we lose those important people but yeah he's a great guy and a uh, great person for our community Go ahead. i want to note that every time i go to the arena but then i see all those signs up there that was word down when i brought that board mm -hmm. all those signs are put in there to help the kids not pay so much for minor hockey he kind of took that work and he started it all so mm -hmm. Great man for the community. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, uh, CEO Poole. Uh, yeah, I guess I'd like to announce or remind everyone that tomorrow night is the Swan School of Dance's annual recital. So if you got time, check it out. It's really entertaining. The Valley Kids jumping around on the stage. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'll be there. I'll be the curtain guy. I was going to say, you're the curtain guy, you know? So you have a really important job that day. Yeah. <laughs> well, have a great evening. Uh, director, go ahead. Uh, so congratulations to this council and past councils on that CT scanner, because I know that was a lot of uh, lobbying that you guys had to do, and you convinced the province, so kudos to you on that. Uh, yeah, the guys have been out trying to patch the potholes that have been, we have some pretty large ones uh, just with that thawing. Um, so we do a few signs out and we're trying to keep up with them, but just be cautious as people are driving. And then also we've been out uh, with the hot water, pressure washer, thawing, catch basins, and culverts, and, uh, and people in the town have been good and Jordan's been out busy. So people let him know when something's backing up and he prioritizes so he makes sure if there's one we're starting to back up towards a house or a business to get that one done but then knock off the other ones too. Uh, looks like we're in for a little bit colder weather now so I'll slow down but as soon as it warms up again it'll start up again. But that's what they've been busy this past little bit. Yeah, definitely thank them for, for street mowing because that was pretty nasty street there. And when they got that cleaned up today, I think a little bit. So, and Mark, so yeah, thank you. Director Clauson. Yeah, I have a couple things. Uh, last week I let council know we were having issues with our brine pump motor in the arena. 
and then it was kind of running on manual, which means it can't start and stop itself. It's still running good. We haven't had it trip or anything, so that's really good news. So um, we have ice till the end of April. So if anybody's looking for ice, come on down and get some. We also have some spring break programming in the pool and the rink, just finalizing what that's going to look like. So that'll go out to our website and social media. Let's so watch for those kind of things. Um, I was lucky enough to, I got to go to the Rec Connections Conference in Winnipeg last week. And uh, it was a lot. It was really cool. There's people from all over the province there. And I got to talk to a whole bunch of different people and to see what they do and how they run their things. and how they talk to their councils. So I learned a lot. Um, and I actually got to tour a pool in Winnipeg, the St. James Assiniboian Centennial Pool. Um, and when I went there, it was really neat, but even with all of the issues our pool has, we have a really nice facility compared to some of those in Winnipeg. This one was built in the 70s, and it's just a square pool and nothing fancy. And uh, I was, I walked away feeling pretty proud because our, our facilities are really nice, really nice. I also got to tour the Hockey for All Center, that's where our conference was all week and that was a really cool building. If you get a chance to go there, go check that out. They've got four ice sheets in this big building when you walk in um, and the moose and the Jets practice there sometimes, doesn't sound like very often. And then you can sit up top in this restaurant area and you can see down onto these four ice surfaces. And there is hockey in there day till night. It's uh, Their ice fees were, I think, $305 an hour during the day. So they're pulling kids out and they're having hockey games all day long. So that was very, very cool. Um, <clears throat> I could go on and on about that. It was very cool. Mass registration, we're going to book um, in the arena for the first week in April. So right after spring break, um, just um, didn't get around to picking a day today. So tomorrow we're going to pick a day, but it'll be the first week of April. So just watch for that. I'm hoping all the clubs will come out and start getting some registrations for everything that they do. Um, That'll be at the curling rink community? It's going to be in the arena, in, in the, the lobby. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll put all of that out. But people are asking when that's happening. So we're, we're, we're going to book it the first week in April. So just watch for that to come out. Um, I think that's all I have to say. All right, thank you. You know, you're talking about our facilities, and uh, I was talking to somebody uh, today from out of town, and they were talking about how when their kids come from out of town and swim at the wellness center, if it's their competitive meets or whatever, and they're just amazed by our facility. So we do have a very nice facility there. We should be very proud of CFO Ganita. I'm not sure if you're all aware of the worldwide uh, concern over environmental and social issues and the desire to uh, start accounting for that. And so uh, a number of years ago, we had to start uh, recognizing landfill closure liabilities and then con uh, contaminated sites. Uh, the latest thing that's com coming for this 2023 year end is uh, asset retirement obligations. And so I sent an email out to the CAO and directors that we need to start uh, thinking about that. Uh, we need to identify all our assets that would have any kind of environmental uh, or hazardous materials that need, would need to be dealt with when the facility is closed. So that includes things like buildings with asbestos and, and lead pipes and uh, PCBs and uh, hazardous uh, materials. And that includes uh, freon in ice plants and uh, lagoons and landfills. And so that, that's going to be a big project going through and identifying all the assets and coming up with estimates of what it would co cost to uh, address those issues when those assets are decommissioned or closed. I watched a webinar today that said it would probably take about a month of work from everybody to uh, determine all that. 
And so uh, that's all part of for the global desire to start accounting for environmental. You've probably seen the acronym ESG, environmental, social, and governance beyond just dollars. But, and so they, they talk about things like uh, climate change and that, but so that's going to be coming eventually as well. And uh, like the, the Airport Commission meeting, one of the members uh, put out the question uh, to the, all the other municipalities that they've been thinking about possible drought. And like, uh, in where he lives in Mafeking, their water comes from a well, but you know, the well could dry up. And some people think, oh, there's lots of water there, but all that kind of stuff is going to have to start being thought about by municipalities, not just for financial reporting, but also for asset management. So there's lot, lots of uh, work ahead of us. And then uh, just the, the standard uh, budget, I just want to encourage council to read through very carefully the reports that were given, and especially the unknowns, especially the big numbers on the unknowns and give some serious consideration to the ramifications of the unknowns if things don't go as hoped. Thank you. Thank you, and thanks for sharing that, and I'm sure that we'll be hearing more about that in, in the next uh, little bit. Okay, 17, resolved that this regular council meeting be adjourned, moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Edwood. All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned.